In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps to create a magazine cover as asked for on exercise 12.1, create a magazine cover. We have been using Photoshop for a long time, and I know that a lot of you don't have Photoshop, so we're going to be doing this in Photo P. There's a couple of videos already in the lesson. This, these show you how to do it in Photoshop. If you're familiar or comfortable enough with Photoshop and Photo P, you could follow probably directions from there. But if you are not comfortable, if you don't know what Photo P is about, let's just get started from scratch. Uh, just check out that the dimensions for this magazine are eight and a half by 11. The resolution is 72 DPI. So I'm going to travel to Photo P. I'm opening up a new um, tab and clicking on my bookmark. It's photop.com. Photo P opens and let's create a new file. I go to the file menu, say I want a new file and the new project will be called magazine. It doesn't have to be capitalized. I prefer you don't capitalize file names. So I won't do it myself. The background will be white. Uh, it doesn't matter what the background is, but white is fine. Actually, maybe it does matter what the background is. What if I pick something else? Uh, well, no, I'll just bring it in later. If I had the same options as I do elsewhere, that'd be better. But let's scroll down to the print menu and under create, pick the letter size and then change the DPI from 300, if you have it at 300, to 72. I'll click on create and here's my blank magazine cover. I'll zoom in just a little bit. You can press control plus, control minus to zoom out, but control plus gets you closer. Uh, the reason why I was trying to see if I could create it with a new color already there was because I need the whole thing to be red because I'm going to uh, recreate a Time Magazine. I'm going to do a quick Google search for Time Magazine cover, and I'm saying Time Magazine cover with Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs uh, generally unoffensive, inoffensive, I should say. Uh, but let's see, here's one that will show you, show you the elements of a Time Magazine cover. It's got that red border around. Inside of the border in the photo, there's a white streak. You'll see if you can see it there. Uh, there might be a headline above the logo. There's the logo. It's not, although it's all over the place, it's not very intrusive. And then there's some readable text. Let me repeat that readable text. Make sure that you have your contrast set up right. Uh, so let's go back to Photo P and I'm going to fill this with red. I had already selected a red, but if you have something else, another color, Click on the um, on the icon with the color here to get your color picker. What would it normally say if I hover on top? It doesn't say anything. It just tell. We'll click and change the color. I have a selection of colors below uh, and a small gamut of colors. I will pick the red. I had changed it previously. You'll see that the red on top is the one that it's picked now. The one that I want is a little bit darker. So I'm going to click on the on the red palette and just get it a little bit darker. I'll click OK to accept it. To fill the whole uh, element, the whole uh, page with red, I'll say Edit and Fill. And I'll use the foreground color, that's the red, and click OK. The opacity, by the way, is at 100%. That's what we want. So now that it's filled, I'm going to press Control Plus a couple of times. And then I'm going to press and hold the Shift key. That gives me this little hand. I can click and drag and look at, at the corner. I want to look closer at the corner because on the left uh, I have my rulers. If you don't see rulers, press Control R until you see the rulers. If you want, you can click on View and make sure that rulers are visible. From the top, I'm going to hovering on top of the ruler. I'm going to click, hold down the mouse button, hold down the Shift button, and bring this down. I'm holding the Shift button in the hopes that it will allow me to stop at 0.5, which is half an inch. I'll do the same thing with the ruler on the left. I was holding shift all this time, so that's been helping me be able to get on 0.5. If you don't hold the shift button while you're moving your ruler, you might end up somewhere else. If you're not exactly on 0.5, just sit close to it. I'm going to do the same thing for the last ruler. I'm, I'm going to try to get an 8 so that it's 8 is half away from half an inch away from 8.5 scrolling down with my mouse roller and then bringing down the last one this should be at 10 point actually if it's 11 it should be at 10.5 right there 
I'm going to press control zero. Here's my cover. It's, it's coming in okay. Uh, I remember I told you there is this white line all around. The reason why I drew this uh, square was so that if I come back and click on the rectangle tool, the rectangular marquee in Photoshop, and I hover above the top left corner of the rulers and click and drag to make a selection, it'll snap to the space that I have drawn. That way, if I go and say that I want to edit and uh, do a stroke, a stroke being a line, I can say, well, give me a three pix, PX, a pixel line. Uh, the position should be, mm, I don't know, we'll say it's going to be in the center. And uh, the opacity will be at 100%. The color, however, I want to change this to be white. I don't have a white selection below, but I can say that I want the hexadecimal value FFF, FFF. If I press tab, it goes to the next thing. FFF, FFF is white. You could have also clicked and dragged all the way to the top left of the color picker. I'll click OK. So now my color is white. My position's in the center. It's three pixels wide. I'll click OK. And maybe you can see it. If I press Control H, I don't know what will happen. Nothing. I'll click on View and uh, see if I can hide the rulers. Maybe I can. I'm not familiar enough with Photopea to say for sure. So what I'm going to do is go to the Select menu and tell it to deselect, select, and deselect. It's Control D was the shortcut. But I see now that, yes, indeed, there is a uh, ruler there, or rather a white rule. Now, I've been uh, very excited about doing this, so I skipped a major step. But that's fine because uh, we can just learn more by making some mistakes. See, I have my history up here, so I can go back to the stroke. This is where I originally laid down the uh, the rule. And then I can go back to Rectangle Select. That's when I actually just make the selection. So now there's no line. My mistake was that I didn't want to draw the ruler, or rather the white line on top directly of the red. I want it to be in its own layer. So now that I have only the selection, I can come back and create a new layer and then tell it to go to edit and stroke and do the same thing make sure that this is white so i'll select white i could have also picked the fffff click ok and click ok so now i have a ruler a rule rather that's white all the way around i'll deselect to get rid of that edit and uh, actually select deselect Control d is the shortcut and now if I turn off the uh, background, I can sort of see that there's a white rule there. So this is a basic template. Let's, uh, I'm going to go back into the Google search. I'm not going to necessarily use uh, Steve Jobs. I'm going to open up a new, a new uh, tab and go to pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y, and find a free image that I can use. I'm going to then, let's make a search for something that's in everybody's mind right now. I'll do a search for the COVID virus and see if I can find a good picture to use. So this gentleman here looks like he's from a video game, but he's uh, very much in the news right now. I'll uh, click it to make it a little bit larger. And while I could go and get a uh, larger version of this, I'm just going to right click and copy this image. I'll come back to Photo P and paste the image on top of the background. Well, I'm in layer one, so that's where it's going to go. I'll say edit and paste. Control V is your shortcut. And there is the image uh, because it's floating in layer one. And I'll double click on layer one to change the name to, well, say cover image. I'll use the move tool to sort of move this guy around. And I'll try to get close to... I don't know the top, the top left corner to the top left, uh, the top, the top left corner that I drew. I'm going to tell it to show me the transform controls. I'm going to press and hold the shift key, and that way this image, whenever I make it larger, it will remain at the same dimensions. And I sort of have him at a place where I want him. I want to see part of his uh, mask and his and his face. And I move them there. I'll click on, I'll press enter 
to accept it and turn off the transform control since it's already been moved. So this is not enough because that's not necessarily the image that I want. Actually, it's not at all the image that I want. The image that I want will fit inside of the square that I drew. So I'm going to click on the rectangle, select the rectangular marquee, and draw, draw the same marquee that I did before. And uh, make that selection and tell it to add a raster mask. I will turn off the link in between the uh, layers there and then make sure that I'm moving the right the right image. I'm clicking on the left image, the left thumbnail, and then I, I can put him a little bit closer. I, I cropped a little bit more than I wanted to, but now there he is. This is the image that I wanted. I can then move on to the next thing. I need to go get the Time Magazine logo. And let's see if I can, how quickly, if at all, I can find it. I'm going to say Time Magazine logo. And uh, I'm going to click on the transparent option. And I can tell it's transparent. Some of these are transparent because of the, um, the checkerboard. Let's see how transparent this one is from Wikimedia. It's transparent enough. I'll click on it. I'll right click and say open the link in the new tab. And I finally find this Time Magazine level. It's the same one. So what happens if I right click here? and copy the image and bring it into the photo P. I want to be on top of the white box. So I click on the white box. I'll edit and paste. And there's the time logo. It's pretty big and I imagine it would be. I press control minus a couple of times so I can log out. Well, not log out, but rather zoom out. I'm then going to move the time logo a little bit so that I can see where it starts, the top left. Then I can click on the transform controls that selects the whole logo. I'm pressing and holding the shift key and I'm going to click and drag this so that it makes it smaller. I want it to fit inside of the width of the magazine. I'll press enter to accept and turn off the transform controls. I will now press control zero to zoom in to the image and I see the Time Magazine logo there. And I don't think that I have enough of the image to move him down. So I'm going to leave the Time Magazine logo sort of where it is. I'm going to try to be a little uh, creative with it so, so that you can see the gentleman's uh, eye, eye, his iris there. It's not being covered. Uh, I'll see if I can maybe go back to that layer and scroll it down a little bit. And well, that's the best that I can do for now. What I could do, I keep on pressing Control T and opening a new tab because I'm looking for the uh, control tools. Transform is what I use Control T for in Photoshop. Let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller and just for this one time, maybe move the time logo a little bit to the right. Make sure that it's prominent enough on the right, but then that way we don't lose the image of the uh, man with the mask. Maybe somewhere around there. Click on transform controls. So there is the time logo, but most of the magazine's already up. Let's uh, click on the text tool and uh, let's make sure that we have a color that we can actually see. So right now it's black. I'm going to click on the color picker and select white and click and drag all the way to the left or type all the Fs if you want. I'll click OK. I'm going to just start to type something. So I'm going to click the T again just to make sure I have the text. And I'm going to click somewhere in this area so that I can start typing. It's loading up the font and it's loaded. I'm going to type in the word COVID-19. I'm going to press the return key so I'm at the uh, uh, at the next line. I'm going to type in something like the virus that sort of, that kept us home. Okay, let's press Control plus to zoom in a little bit. I'm pressing the wrong key. No, I'm pressing the right key, but it's not liking me right now. But let's see, that's a search. You know, this uh, this tool is great, but it still has its, uh, its quirks. 
So what I was trying to do is pressing, let's see, what if I press Control zero, press Control plus again, that's zooming out the wrong way. Okay. I'm going to press Control. Actually, I'm going to go to the Move key. Maybe it should be in the Move tool. And if I press Control and the spacebar, I get the, uh, the zoom. Oh, yes, and I can click and find my way here. I'm going to double click on the T for COVID-19 and select just the COVID. I want this to be not book, but rather something else, maybe bold. It's loading it. It's darker than that. And now instead of 24 PX, I'm going to take this a little bit larger. I'll take it to 42. One of those uh, old Mac numbers. 42. And the virus that kept us home is currently at 24. I'm going to take this to 30 pixels. Press Control 0. Nothing happens. I'll click on the Move tool. Then press Control 0. And make sure that this COVID-19, this area, this is in an area that's readable. I'm going to click and drag it a little bit. And I'm going to right click on the COVID-19 text uh, layer. See if I get a layer style, which I do. No. Actually, I need to get the effects below and uh, get a, uh, I can get either a glow or a drop shadow. I think that a glow might work better. See so an outer glow. And this outer glow, I'm going to tell it to do a blend, uh, blend mode that is multiplied. That'll make it darker. The color currently is yellow, which is not darker than white. So I can then select on black and see what else I can see. I can make the, uh, actually I click OK. I can make the size a little bit larger, just a little bit, and the spread a little bit larger. Uh, the opacity is currently at 75%. I'll make that darker, take it to 100. And uh, I think that that should work better. It's precise better, precise maybe a little bit better. I end up with the spread at... I'll put it in at 10, and the size, I'll put it at 20. How about that? I'll click OK. Press Control 0 again to see more of it. I need to be pressing the uh, Move tool. My best friend, the Move tool. And so we're almost done with this. I got the Time Magazine logo on top, and I got the uh, headline below. I just need one more thing up here, and I'm going to change to the Text tool. I'll click on Deja Vu Sans, that's fine. And I'm going to make sure that this is on book. And the size, maybe take it down to, I'd say, 12. And then click. And I'll put in the date. And I'll just say that it's uh, December uh, 31st, 20, you know, today's day, 2025. And I'll click on the Move tool. And then just move this where it's a little bit more readable. Press. Uh, control zero to zoom out and here's my time magazine unfortunately and I did not foresee this the COVID uh, 19 also changed and I don't understand why let's see if I can do something about this I am selecting the COVID 19 layer and I want to press control T again I want to press transfer controls press and hold the shift key and make this larger press enter and then press the transform controls and now um, since it changed all of the text, I can select the COVID-19, make this, rather than book, make it, um, let's make it bold, and let's make it larger. So let's take it from 32 all the way to 48. So here's a Time Magazine cover created in a photo P uh, in about 20 minutes. I guess I can go to the uh, view menu and tell it to clear the guides and then they're gone and I can see my magazine cover a little bit better and I'm done. You don't have to do the Time Magazine, you can do any magazine you want. Make sure that you see the samples in the assignment. Make sure that you save your Time Magazine cover as a PSD, save as PSD, and which I guess I can do myself. I'll save as PSD and I'll call this, well it's already called Magazine, and I'll click Save and it'll be in my Google Drive waiting for me. Um, just turn it in for grade and move on to the next great thing. Thanks a lot.